I want to read to you a scripture and then I'll pray. If you're turning in your Bibles to scriptures, I'm going to Luke 11, verse 5 to 10. I'm reading in the New King James Version. This is Jesus speaking. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, let me th- lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, Though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So, I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. The word of God is so powerful. Jesus' very words. Let me just pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your presence here. For your beautiful goodness towards us, Jesus. For your your love towards us, your presence in the room with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just ask you to open the eyes of our hearts and our souls and our spirits to hear from you, to receive from you. Lord, as you encourage, as you teach, as you correct, as you comfort, whatever it might be, Lord, there is treasure of heaven for us to have this morning. So Holy Spirit, I just ask you to have your way with each one of us, to open our eyes, the eyes of our hearts, the eyes of our minds, our souls, our spirits, to receive from you in rich abundance this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I pray this in your name. Amen. A well-known bit of scripture, you know, he who asks, seeks, knocks, or basically get. I wanted to talk to us today, a, an anchor point, about being kingdom seekers. I was going to say God seekers. But I actually wanted to say kingdom seekers to bring out another aspect that, you know, we've been through, um, if you're part of this church family, we've been on a journey over some years and years now of actually uh, making sure we have our own personal relationship with God. Encounters, hearing him, you know, we've, we've put a bit of focus on that. But, you know, I actually want to speak to us about being kingdom seekers, about the precepts of the kingdom rather than just God himself. You know, God hides things for us. I've heard this before. God hides things for us, not from us. You know, there are great treasures, uh, um, gems, jewels, precious things that are hidden. They've been formed over time under pressure. You know, there are treasures in heaven like that. But sometimes you have to dig, you have to clear away the space to find them. It's not just on the surface. Um, It's so easy for us to, or it could be easy for us to to have a relationship with the Lord where we ask for miracles to happen or answers to prayer. And when they don't happen, we get discouraged. Sometimes you have to dig. Sometimes you have to plow. Sometimes you have to wait. So I want to speak into that this morning. We don't want to live passive Christian lives where we just wait for the zap to come in answer to the prayer. It takes some, it takes some effort. <laughs> Apparently it takes persistence. <laughs> so that scripture said. You know, talking of, of hidden pre- tre- treasures, I was just reminded of the Matthew 13 scripture talking about the hidden treasure and the pearl. It goes like this. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like Jesus telling us what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. There's a cost to seeking the treasure of heaven. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I'd love to encourage you that there is a kingdom to be sought in your life 
that comes at great cost. Great deliberate perseverance. So I wanted to have a look at that today. Having a look at being kingdom seekers. I'd say probably one of the greatest costs in our Western experience anyway, just from what I observe and what I live myself. One of the greatest costs I find we have to pay is putting down our own agenda, our own idea of what God should do, would do, could do, and actually surrendering, yielding to him. In church life, it is quite um, easy for us to feel like we're in touch with God, we're hearing from God in our, our services, and we decide what it should look like. We've just had incredible encouragement this morning of a testimony that waited on God. Yes, a little word, but the waiting, the waiting. I want to speak to us about being kingdom seekers that comes at a cost. You know, Jesus spoke in parables. He didn't just lay it all out there. This is the way to have a fantastic, successful Christian life. He spoke in parables. But the great thing is, he's given us the ability to discover and and delve in and discover those mysteries. What does he say? Matthew 13, when they asked, you know, why do you speak in these parables? He said this, he answered and said to them, because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, those that don't know him, I put that in there, it has not been given. For whoever has to him, more will be given and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. We've been granted all of heaven. But we actually have to go and seek it out. We have to go and dig for it. We need to go. It's not about studying the Bible. It's about being yielded to him and letting him guide you. Because each one of us has our own journey. Just because you're married doesn't mean you have the same journey. Because you're from the same family or the same church or the same town, the same color, the same sex or anything else. Your journey is unique to you. And it's all founded on what we've been looking at this morning, just how wonderful he is, how faithful he is, how awesome he is. Oh, wow, there's just been so much encouragement this morning for us to understand that being a kingdom seeker is founded on the great king, Jesus, the son of God, and all that he has given us. You know, um, God uses circumstances to grow us. He uses trials and tribulations to grow us, doesn't he? Um, If you think about it, if life's going fairly cruisy, you're not likely to need to do much digging into God's way because you just do what works because life's happy. So there you get to this incredible point where Paul says in Romans 5, but we also glory in tribulations. That's a bit weird, isn't it? (laughs) But it's not. I want to encourage you. It's not. There's a way you can walk where you find your tribulations, your trouble, your, your trial, and be able to go, wow, God's got something to teach me, to show me. Wow. Isn't this great that I haven't got an answer to this prayer? <laughs> like, can we live like that? So he goes on and he says, we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Isn't that what we're wanting when we're in the middle of a problem? You want to have hope that it's going to come through okay? Well, that's what trials do for us. They develop that in us. I love this, that, that, you know, even a scripture that we started out with, the journey has been about persistence before he gets to to say, ask, seek and knock. I'm probably jumping ahead in um, what I wanted to share with you. I'll just come back. So I want to share with you just my own sort of thoughts on being a kingdom seeker, what I've learned, what I found so, um, you know, key for me, having a kingdom seeker attitude or anchor point in my life for me to navigate all those trials and troubles and unanswered questions, those mysteries in life. And so I've got four of them, four kingdom seeker key points. So the first one is persistent, being persistent. I need to be persistent in being a kingdom seeker. So as I said before, it's not just about a 
a God seeker. I, you know, I was going to say at one point that we need to seek, seek God rather than his hand, seek his face rather than his hand. But as I said, it's actually not even about the encounter with him personally. Sometimes we can get hooked up on that, but if we haven't encountered him, if we haven't heard his voice, if we haven't felt him or whatever, how about just discovering who he is in his word? And being able to stand on that. But you have to be persistent in delving in there to know who he is, what he says, what he's given you. And there's an abundance of life out of it. I love that as well. Sorry, back in the Luke 11 scripture. Is it? No, um, no it isn't. I haven't got to it yet. I'll get there. <laughs> I want to share with you the Canaanite woman. There's a woman um, of Canaan who came to... To Jesus and was rejected. She had to be persistent. I'm just going to read that to you. Matthew 15. It's a bit of a story. Matthew 15, starting at verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, that being Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. Do you ever live in that space where you ask? You cry out to him and you don't hear anything. What does this woman do? (sighs) And his disciples came and urged him, saying, oh, send her away. She cries out after us. Even those around aren't real excited. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, the significance of that is that she is not from the house of Israel. She's a Gentile. Jesus is basically saying, I'm actually not here for her. Wow. What sort of persistence, perseverance was this woman going to need? Then she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. She persisted. But he answered again and said, is it not, uh, sorry, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Goodness me. I don't know that I would actually like being under that sort of response from our Lord. I think I'd get offended too. I could. Like, wow, this is a a picture of perseverance that's pretty tough to take. And look what she then says, verse 27, and she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. There's her perseverance. There's her, her understanding that this is, what does she call him? She says, O Lord, son of David. She acknowledges who he is and says, well, I know who you are. So even I, unworthy I, am worthy to get the, the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Rather than focusing in on the answered prayer, which is just, you know, the answered cry from this woman, the perseverance, the persistence is what I want to bring out to us. That we need to be able to to be persistent, not get discouraged. You know, not feel, oh, well, it didn't happen. Put the prayer in the prayer basket, nothing happened. So keep coming back. Keep coming back. What was the Luke scripture? The woman's kept coming back and and it says, um, Jesus said, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because his friend, because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. There's this persistence that has a result for us to become kingdom seekers. I could go on, the woman with the issue of blood, you know, push through all sorts of obstacles. But I'll move on. My other, my next point was um, being patient. Being patient in believing. Not just being patient and waiting, but being patient in believing. Don't get discouraged. I wanted to, to have a look at Joseph, but Joseph's got too many things for me to bring them out. But just to highlight for you, Joseph had every reason to feel as discouraged as you might feel in life. Here's my little summary of some of them. He was abused and abandoned and sold out by his own. Mm. He had unfulfilled dreams. The dream then was what um, ended him up in the predicament in the first place. Then in that predicament, he's he's in slavery and he gets falsely accused, falsely imprisoned, overlooked, forgotten. Have you ever felt like that when you've come crying out to God? 
You need to be patient. You need to be patient. You need to be patient in believing. The reason I bring out, out Joseph is throughout the story, it talks about the Lord being with him. The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. The Lord wouldn't have been with him if he wasn't someone who was reaching out to him and had a relationship with him. We need to be kingdom seekers that don't get discouraged while we're waiting. That we get, you know, develop a, a patience in believing that will actually allow him to move in his time, in his way. How many of us have, I know plenty of you have come and shared stories with not having the answered prayer that you've been believing for until. What about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? They say, we won't doubt, bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar. Our God will save us. They know who he is. But even if he doesn't, there has to be this sort of preparedness in you for, to allow God to be God of your life. I'm not saying forego any of his word, any of his promises, any of his word to you. But there's still this yielded, humble place. That's the next one is actually being humble. We need to be persistent. We need to be patient in believing even when you've got all the reason to be discouraged. But you also need to be humble is the word I use for it. It's this place of being yielded. I'm, I've been intrigued by, I'll have to say it, my, my own errors and realising I'm, I'm just picking up a word. I'd like to say I've, I can recognise conceit within me. Just had to discover what that word really meant. I realise I've walked in a lot of conceit. I have these inflated ideas of that I know how something ought to be. I probably call it arrogance towards you, you know, arrogance when I've been speaking before, but it's conceit. We can be, a, be walking in conceit when we think we know how God should move, would move, will move. Um, you know, we, we feel we cry out to God and we hear nothing back, and, but he ought to answer because he loves me and I'm in a relationship with him. Maybe he doesn't need to answer because he's already spoken to you before. I say this to Jeff during the week. What boss is there that wants their, I'll make it up, you know, his engineer who is employed to do a particular engineering job to come in every day and go, oh, what do you want me to do? The job I told you to do yesterday. The same job you do every day. You know, there comes this point where we are seeking God and he just says, well, keep doing what I told you to do. Yeah. So I was saying to Jeff, you know, I don't need to hear from God every morning that I should love my husband. Yeah. I don't need... So <laughs> oh, so, okay. Uh, may, maybe, maybe I do because it needs a bit of a tweak. But <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like sometimes we can, we're, we're searching for God to do something. We've decided in our conceit, can I say it? Because it just stirs me up. I'm conceited. I, I apologize for my conceit. I'm repenting to the Lord. You know, I, can we recognize these errors within us that stop us being true kingdom seekers? It takes a humbleness, it takes a yieldedness, it, it takes a teachableness that says, I hope you're actually, sorry, I'm interrupting myself, I hope you're all actually now listening. What's God saying to you? I've got nothing clever to say, but he's got great things to say. And I'm believing that he's got great things that he already planned for you today to hear. If you can be excited, if you can be humble, if you can be yielded, if you can be anticipating this good, good God who does the miraculous like we've heard of, who oh, is just so amazing with what he's given us anyway. You allow him to lead you. Persistent, patient in believing, humble. You know, um, I was thinking of a, a story in the Bible where this humility got in the way. Do you know the story of Naaman? I'll read you a little bit of it in 2 Kings 5, verses 10 to 12. And it says, Elisha, the, the prophet, sent a messenger to him, being Naaman, saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Sorry, Naaman had leprosy. And he was seeking healing. Anyway, so Elisha says, sends a messenger, messenger to him and says, so he sends a messenger. Elisha doesn't even come himself. Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. That sounds good news. There's the word of the Lord. Yay. But what does Naaman, 
I was saying in his conceit or arrogance or something or rather else, pride, any of those naughty words. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farpa, whatever it is, <laughs> the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? He's saying that his rivers are better than the dirty old Jordan. Why do I have to go and do that? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. We can, now hopefully we are not, you know, walking quite like that, but maybe sometimes our attitude is so unyielded that it's like that. We've decided how God should answer, when he should answer. Oh, don't get distracted, Fiona. The end of that story, I haven't read it all out, but his servant actually says, like, well, is it such a big deal, you know? Like, couldn't you just go and do it and, and get healed? He does, and he gets healed. But the, th the thing is, so that was great, wasn't it? <laughs> You're allowed to make a mistake and repent of it, but if we are to be kingdom seekers, we put our, our attitude towards the fact that he's the most amazing, wonderful God, so able. And he makes a way for us to approach him. And he wants us to discover the treasures of truth, of life for us, that he has for us. We are going to be persistent, patient in believing, humble or yielded. And the other thing I said was constant. Might seem a little bit like being persistent, but I just want to bring out the fact that we still need to keep doing what we're called to do. We don't give up. So often I see beautiful members of our church family that have wandered off for all sorts of different reasons. But part of me sort of feels like, but you knew what to do. You knew to stay in the house. You knew to stay being generous. You knew to stay praying, whatever it might be. You know, We don't stop because of discouragement, because we haven't got the answer we want, because we don't understand, we don't stop doing what we know to do. We keep reading his word, whether you get anything out of it or not. It doesn't about, not about you getting a revelation and, you know, something that feels good. You keep reading it, just feed it in. It won't come back void, God says that. You keep praying. The effective, fervent prayer of a, of a righteous man avails much. Keep praying. You know, things like that. Coming to church. It's his house. It's his bride. It's his body. It's where you belong. You don't stop. So many things that we shouldn't give up. I was noticing that Jesus was described as coming to church as was his custom. Paul was described coming to church as was his custom, even though they sort of technically didn't need to. <laughs> Jesus was the answer. Jesus was the answer. <laughs> he didn't need to come to church, but their custom was. What's your customs in your life? What are your non-negotiables we often talk about? Sometimes I think these little cliched things are useful, but they're also can be can get in the way because they stop us thinking and I just want you to hear what Holy Spirit's saying to you about anything that's been shared today don't stop doing what you know to do press back in there again kingdom seekers I'm going to ask the team to come back up kingdom seekers kingdom seekers not just God seekers we choose to be persistent, patient in believing, humble. We remain constant, knowing what to do, knowing, sorry, keeping on doing what we know what to do, know, know to do. There we are, came out. I would love to encourage you that there is a kingdom of treasure for you. God's got treasure unique to you, pearls and gold and ruby and diamonds and topaz and anything else you can think of if you want to go digging for it. 
You want to go mining for it. You want to press in and he'll show you things that are just for you. There's a scripture that talks about that. I can't remember the first part of it. And I will show you great and mighty things that you did not know. I just can't remember the beginning of it. But yeah, God's got great and mighty things to show you. Let alone the treasure he has as you walk through your stuff, your life. It's about him alone. Just him. He has all that you need. I just think that's so beautiful. Why don't we stand? I would love you to sort of contemplate how great your God is, what he's got for you. And we're going to sing this new song. We're going to get excited about what he has given us, the testimonies we've heard today, the treasures he has for you that he's possibly even given you today that he has for you in your life situations. It's going to be great. Let's sing. Thanks, team.